Right, hi chums, we're on the potato reveals and uh, we're getting near the end. This is this is almost the the, the, the swan song. So we've got something slightly different today. These potatoes here are a bag of golden wonder. And they were part of a trial that myself and John from Wicklow did in this garden during the summer. Now it was only a friendly trial, but he absolutely hammered me and I didn't do very well at all. I should have seen the killer in his eyes when we were setting this up. I knew it would never be fun for him. He just wanted victory at all costs. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, this is the final stage of our friendly little competition. Now, I didn't know what to do. Do you, do I open my own first and see how many I have? Or do I open John's and see how many he has? And I thought, well, it's always good to see the strength of your enemy, sorry, the, the person you're having a bit of fun with. So we'll do John's first and we'll see how he got on. So Golden Wonder, these should have been out in September probably, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully they're not completely ruined. And then the problem with it is, I'm being really honest about this, I'm going to actually weigh them as well. <laughs> Where's my wee bucket? Where's my bucket? I'm going to weigh them so there's, there can be no there can be no accusations of cheating and stuff. Um, they're a bit like a salad potato, like a charlotte char char or something, you know. I've never ever seen these potatoes before. This is a brand new potato for me, so let's look and see how I'm fixed here. Actually, I better get as much dirt off John's as I can, just in case, you know. So. Uh, Where are we at? So that's that. So at the moment, I'm down from the, the, the garage at the moment. Look, I think that is, that's slug eggs there. Do you see that? I think that's those little glassy things are slug eggs. So we'll just get rid of those. And uh, I'm up in the, in, the, in the shed at the moment. I've got the lathe moved. Uh, the guys were brilliant. They came over and they moved the stuff for me. and. Got everything under under control and gave me a couple of real good ideas. So that was me in a position then when the stuff was moved, I then could start doing all the sort of detail and trim basically to see, to make the thing as, well, as efficient as possible, I suppose would be the best way to put it, you know, because at the end of the day, um, we're trying to get work out of the place, you know. Um, so I have been very happy this last couple of days, just working away in the shed and uh, generally just having a good time, you know. So I was up having some lunch there and uh, I was having some lunch and I decided I'd, after lunch I'd go and do these golden wonders. I thought they would have been an awful lot bigger than they were, um, than they are. but. The seed potato we put in were about the same size as this, these boys that were, that were taken out, you know. I just want to go around here, I just want to go and have another look and see can I set that camera up anyway slightly better for you. Hold on, let's see. I don't know what I'm getting here. Would that be better there? Just a wee bit, I think that way there might be slightly better. Right, okay. So, uh, as I say, I'm working in, in the shed at the moment. I'm getting, see this whole dust extractor thing? became a, a major project and that then Michael, my turning mate, he was the one who suggested that um, I, I, I moved the lathe and stuff so it's all his fault and then I've got work to get done but I need to get this thing sorted out first. So I've been up early this last few mornings just working away at it and the problem with it is that while he was telling me to move the lathe, Michael also made a few very, very good suggestions about placing machines and about placing switches and stuff. So that has meant that I have done more work than I intended. And a lot of that work could be something like the, the hour and a half it took this morning to make a wee bracket to adjust the position of the, the inverter and stuff like that, you know, the control box. And uh, it's the detail, the devil's in the detail. Um, it's the detail that's taken up all the time. So uh, that's, that's why I'm sort of been 
hanging about, or it looks like I'm hanging about doing nothing. I'm actually working very hard, but there's a lot of work being done, but there's not much to see. When, and whenever I show you this reveal, when I when I do get all the, when I do get all the, what do you call I hope you notice, John, that I am being very, very particular here to make sure that I get every single potato, because I don't want any sort of appearances in the European courts to try and resolve this international dispute over a potato, you know. So, uh, where are we at there? So to say, I'm working away at the, at the, at the shed and uh, it'll be revealed in a few days time um, when I get back at that, when I get at it again. Once I've got this done, I'll, uh, I'll go back to the, the shed and talk, just work away there. It's the sort of work I love, you know. It's just doing the things the way I want it done, you know. It's my shed, I'll do it my way. But where it's really good is, my friends are giving me super advice, you know. My wife one time said to me, something happened, something that the guys did for me, they just arrived here to help me with something that I had mentioned. And after they'd gone, my wife said to me, Brendan, do you appreciate how lucky you are to have the friends that you have? And I said, yes, I do. Because I really, I am really, really lucky. I really hate saying this in public because now they're going to be absolutely bloody unbearable. But uh, I do, I am very, very lucky to have the friends that I have. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, I, I will always appreciate that, you know, I'll always appreciate them because they're a fantastic bunch of guys. John, that's, uh, that looks like you done. Just going to turn the screen a wee bit here. I've got my lovely, uh, my lovely Scott Man gloves on from Scott, and uh, very pleased with that. There's another little thing coming up about that. He, Scott has already made reference to a little thing that's going to happen that we've never seen happen before. Um, a wee little thing we're going to do. So after this, I'm going to make a video that I will send to Scott. Um, so that uh, he can play with it, but if you if I can't send the file and he has to extract the file from YouTube, you might see me putting up a video that's private. It's not that it's not a case where it's something really secretive and all. It's just a case that this is a wee experiment we're we're playing with, and uh, the privacy thing is just to let everything let everything go until such time as we um, get it sorted out. Look, I think that's not bad now. I don't know what weights in those, but there's a lot of dinners. So what I'll do is, I, as, as quickly as I can, I'll shake off as much potato, much soil as I can, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll take these down and leave them down there to weigh, and then we'll have the grand weighing after I finish these. The next reveal. That was another nice handy thing that the boys were here, and they managed to move the bags over for me into positions where I was able to just lift them down into the wheelbarrow today, left one in the wheelbarrow for me and then the other one they left on top of the moor so I can just lift it up, like basically just, just slide it down the, the hood of the, the hood, the hood, I'm turning into a bloody American slide it down the bonnet of the moor and uh, get the soil out John, get the soil out and uh, slide it down the bonnet of the moor and then we'll um, I've lost my plastic bag Oh no, I haven't. I'm in the, in the here, it'll be handy enough. So we'll just put John's in there, and then when we come to weigh time, we have those down. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it now, folks. I'm gonna empty this wheelbarrow and come back up and get another bag ready to go. So that's, that's John's potatoes down there, and I hope I didn't accidentally spill half of them out in the ground. <laughs> And then, uh, oh, oh, sorry, that's me. That, that's me emptying the wheelbarrow. You know, you have to make, you have to make grunts and groans and sound effects. You know? It just doesn't get emptied the same way. You know. Right, where are we at now? Turn this here around to see. If, am I in position? No, I'm not. I'm this, this way somewhat. Right, where are we at now? That's not too bad. 
Oh, well, I've only the bag spuds now. So these are mine. Oh. Right. Slide. Oh, there we go. Right. This is a little bit I do. Before every reveal, I go into the bags like this and just to turn my screen round, I go into the bags like this and just lift all the crap off the top basically. I don't want to put those little, so little things into the soil. And somebody asked me, where are the, the plants? Well, there's, this la there's the last of the stems there. And the, the rest of the roots and stuff just seem to dissolve inside the bag. So, uh, that's just the way they are. So, that's most of the... Whoa, didn't want that. See, those little things don't look big, but look at the length of the, look at the, length of the roots in that boy there, you know. Very long. That's only a little toady thing. Okay, that looks near enough there. So there we are, just for proof. Our golden golden wonder B, the 27th of March. So that was near just a few days after St. Patrick's Day. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. There's what, 10 months. And they're still looking okay. Somebody, some people were saying to me recently on the comments about how their spuds were going bad and they can't store them like I do. The difference I've been making, I think, is that I'm storing my potatoes in the greenhouse, in the dry, and just letting them sit in the... They're not getting any extra, extra um, moisture, but look, you can see that there. Well, that's not bad, actually. That's why the, I'm sorry, that's why the bags aren't too hard to lift, because the, um, they're quite dry, you know? And I think that is part of the whole business of trying to keep the... trying to keep the potatoes good, you know? I think that's okay there. Right. So we'll do mine now. Let's see how we get on. I, I can I can I can feel that I'm beaten already, you know. Very bad attitude, a bad attitude, but I'm beaten already. Right, so here we go. Um so what else? I was very sick, but I'm not gonna tell you all about that. I'm just gonna tell you I was sick. And that knocked me out for a week. I didn't imagine it was possible to sleep for four days because I don't sleep well at the best of times, but I slept for four days, and it was one of the, one of the, the less pleasant experiences of my wife, of my wife, <laughs> of my life. I was thinking about my wife and what she had to put up with because she wasn't she, but she was very kind to me, you know, and very attentive and making sure water, and well, not so much making sure as I had water as insisting I drank plenty of water because at that stage, you know. I was just scared to even take water, you know. But at the end of the day, she knows best, so I did what I was told. And it worked out dead on. So there you are. So as I say, but that the, the, the point about the sickness is that it knocked me back for a few days, you know. But it's, it was amazing. Do you, know what, do you know what worries me really badly? Whenever I get ill or I get very tired and sometimes I push myself a bit too hard and uh, I keep having to remind myself that I'm, I had to retire because for medical reasons, you know, I keep thinking that I'm a great fella, but I forget we've got limitations too. And sometimes I push it too hard, and then I kind of have to take a step back for a couple of days and a couple of few days. And what happens then is I start to worry that I'm not really tired, that I have lost interest in the garden, and I've lost interest in the workshop, and I've lost interest in making videos and that I'm just going to spend the rest of my life sitting in a chair doing nothing because I'm just so bloody lazy that I'll never get off my backside again, you know? I, I, I don't know if... <laughs> guilt is a big part of my psyche, you know? Um, so I, I feel guilty when I'm not working, you know? We had two guys arrive here from one of those f film, movie, movie things where you subscribe to movie channels and you can watch movies on your phone and all this sort of stuff. I don't even know what it's called, you know, but they arrived here one day to ask me to take out a subscription, and I said, no, thank you. And I went, but what's the problem? You can watch movies whenever you want, and you can watch this and watch that. And I said, better watch TV. And he went, what do you mean you don't watch TV? And I said, I don't watch TV. And he went, but, but you must watch something. And I said, well, I watch YouTube videos. And he went, well, there you go. You can get this subscription out, and what'll happen is, 
Anytime you want to watch videos on your computer, you just go to this and you can stream computers and all this, or not computers, you can stream movies and all the rest of it. And I said, but I don't want to do that because I don't, I don't watch movies. And they go, you don't watch movies, or films we call them. You don't watch films? And I said, no. Said, Why not? I said, because I don't like sitting down to watch something because I'm nosy, right? But that's, that's value put. I don't like sitting down to watch something that I then feel compelled to watch for the next hour and a half just to find out what happens in the end, okay? Because I'm basically nosy, okay? So, what, so that's where the, the, the DVD and all and the video was great for me because I could buy a movie and didn't really like it, just whiz through it to see what happens and then it takes up a lot less time and they can go and do something important like work, you know? So then they said to me, but what, but what do you do when you're not working? And I said, I'm never not working. I said, it's not a case I'm doing a big fella, but I said, I'm always doing something. If I'm not out in the garden, I'm in the workshop. And if I'm not in the workshop, I'm recovering from having been in the workshop and ha watching videos on YouTube before I go to bed. Or I'm watching, you know, maybe you notice where I answer things during the day and at different times that you're on, I suddenly come in quickly when you've just uploaded a video. And there's a guy I'm on YouTube all the time. But I would go on sporadically during the day, so my cup of tea would be up at YouTube. Me sort of evening sort of cup of coffee or whatever would be, would be up at YouTube. So I would nip in four or five times a day when I was having a cup of tea or something for a break and watch YouTube videos, because that's what I love, because I'm learning something, I'm having a bit of fun, and you lot are a lot more entertaining than mainstream media and Hollywood. So uh, you can give yourselves all a pat on the back because that's quite an achievement. So, as I say, these two guys were just bewildered by this lunatic who didn't watch TV, who just kept working all the time and didn't want to subscribe to their computer thing. And they kept giving me all their, do you know the way they do their, they go through all their scripts and everything. And they went through their scripts and you could, I just could see where they're coming, turning the page over for the next, the next reason I should buy their product. And uh, what do you call it? They just one minor issue with the whole problem of me. They had nobody, they had no sort of part of it. That doesn't look bad at all there, does it? That doesn't look bad, and I'm quite hopeful here of thrashing this way. Sorry, I'm quite hopefully that, hopeful that I might have a, maybe one or two potatoes more than John. So, what do we see now? Put these back in again, and we'll go and do some weighing. But as I say, these guys will go through their script, and you can see them frantically searching in their heads for some reason that somebody who does not watch TV or like movies should buy their product off them. And eventually they just said, look, sir, we'll, we'll leave you to it then. We're sorry for wasting your time. Actually, you didn't waste my time. You wasted your own time. And that kind of went down a bit flat with them, you know. So off they went and tried to nail some other poor creature. But that was that. So there we go. Now the next big moment, folks, is the weighing. So what we're doing now is we're moving the camera from here down to here and as you can see we have our scales all set up I just get my, get my tripod in position here and turn this here up to here and I don't want to see I really should have put that over there a bit more I, hadn't, I didn't think this out right here we are that should be in front of the that should be in front of the thing now right now that's the scales and I can zoom in, so what do we see now? I'll have to do this. A wee zoomy zoomy thing with, what do we see now, where are we at? Right? And I think you would all agree that, that is on zero. So we'll come back out again. And these are John's. Okay, so there's the white plastic bag, those are John's. Um, oh, off it, off it. So as I say, they didn't get much joy, but as I, the point I was making was, I don't watch TV, and it's because I don't want to get caught out with something that I want to see the end of, but don't want to watch. I like sport, I like motorbikes, and I like um, <laughs> motorbikes, right? I like the, watch the Olympics, I watched a lot of that, and but I don't actually make a point of sitting down to watch sport. If it's on, I'll watch it, but... Um, I wouldn't like to come in and say, I need to watch such and such. Um, 
I'd watch a big huge events. It's a Super Bowl on today, but uh, I'd watch big huge events sometimes. I wouldn't watch a Super Bowl because I just don't understand that game at all. It's uh, it's like something was invented by Americans, you know. So there you may go, Brandon. Just insult an entire continent. <laughs> right there you go, folks. Look. I'll just make sure to see here, look, there's the bag, there's the bag being emptied, okay, and what have we got, we have got exactly, almost exactly three and a half pounds, okay, so I want to just make sure that you get, you see that, right, we'll see now, is that clear enough there, I'm just going to tip the camera in to make sure you see it okay, okay, so there you are, three and a half pounds, okay, so what's that in kilos? Well, two kilos is four point four pounds, so just over about one and three quarter kilos. Right, so we'll bring this back out again now and do mine. Okay, so that's that, that's what John's done. I'll just put these back into this bag again because it'll be protecting up the house. Ooh. So look, what I'll do is I'll knock. Knock John's, knock, knock John's dirt out and everything, okay? So where are we at then? Have to do all this back to zero stuff and all, let's see now. Now as you can see, that's, that's on zero now, okay? So we'll just Ooh, back again here. Right, now. Okay, that's us. And then these are, where, where's my potatoes? Oh, there we are. <coughs> so I'm gonna have to, um, there's mine. Okay, here we are. So I'm going to have to go and look up, um, Three and a half pounds, isn't that right for John? Three and a half pounds, yeah. So, I'm going to have to go and look up Golden Wonder potatoes to see how to cook these. The one thing I do really like about them is they're a small potato. Small potatoes suit my wife and I very well because we can put a few out for our dinner and not have to worry about wasting huge potatoes, you know. It's all hard to know what to do with half a potato, you know. Um, and I suppose we would cook them on and then use them for something else, like potato salad or something, there's enough. But there's another question, folks. Freezing cooked mashed potato. I have no joy, I have no luck freezing mashed potatoes. Whenever I open it up again, it just goes into like a watery mess, you know. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, where do you see this? Right there we go, folks. And look, I didn't even put the soil in, look. Okay, but look at this here, look at this here. Da 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 Four and a half pounds, one pound exactly more than John, and I did set it back to zero again. So another a fantastic victory. Sorry, no. I'm really pleased that that has sort of worked out like that because John had got a very good results earlier on in the year and I didn't do very well. So um, it's nice that one of the bags came out for me. So uh, John, well done. Um, I, I congratulate you heartily on your fantastic success, except for the last bag. <laughs> anyway, that's us. So three and a half for John, four and a half for me. So um, I don't know if that means anything, but we put the same number of bags. I think we put about three, three or four potatoes out in each bag. But I'll tell you what, in terms of returns, I think that's one of the best we've done so far. So uh, I would, John, I would, my, to be serious for a moment, my thinking next year, or this year will be, I'm going to get some of these Golden Wonder potatoes. I've got my Caras in and I've got my Charlottes, Charlottes, but those Golden Wonders are worth doing, I think. We'll, we'll eat a few tonight and see what they're like, but if they're nice, I'll do them because they're a good long-lasting potato in terms of keeping them in the storage because that's our problem with storing things. I have, I'm actually going off. We'll do see if I can do something here. Rather than stand and talk into the back of the camera, we'll see if I turn that like that, I turn that like that, and then turn that up there. Yeah. So, I'm say, as I say, in terms of... Uh, 
terms of potato yield, those are worth doing. And our problem is storing potatoes, but those store well as well. So I'm very happy with those ones. That's a good one. So thanks, John, for introducing me to those. Otherwise, I would never have tried them. That's the bottom line. My problem is storing onions. I can't store onions because I've got nowhere ready to put them. The sheds are not heated, and it gets cold enough here that the onions go off. The greenhouse is not heated, but it's too warm in here when the sun shines, and that, that puts them off. And I can't put them in my, in my workshop because I've got the heat on in the workshop. And the house is too warm, so I don't know. I don't know how to store the onions. I, I don't have any particularly good place to do it. So I'm going to do less onions this year rather than waste them because most of the onions I have are now going into the bin. We've just hit a stage now where they're all they're all bad. And I was keeping them up in the little wash house behind the house because it's very frost free and it's got I'm I'm certain about to heat with a tumble dryer, but and the boiler, but the doors are a big sliding door on it, so that keeps the that keeps the temperature sort of very moderate to low so it's not a case where they're getting blasted with heat but we'll have to do something with these onions i don't know what i'm going to do but we'll have to do something so folks at the moment what we're going to do is we're going to start planting out seeds and stuff i've got a few other plans to do i have another couple of videos to do and then i'll get back up to the garage now and start working on this workshop again okay so um all the best now john i really enjoyed that potato trial it was really good fun have you fancy doing it again i'm your man all right so, all the best now, folks. Bye-bye.